I like to discuss infrared photography. In this video, I'll show you how I deal with images that have multiple white balance or color temperature settings within the same image. For example, with this image, if I was to white balance on the clouds, I would get nice looking clouds, but then there'd be a red cast in the rest of the image, including all of this granite. But if I white balance on the granite, then that affects the sky a little bit, but it creates this red cast in the shadows over here on the left. If I white balance in the shadows, then that creates a blue cast on the rest of the image. I don't like any one of these options by themselves, so I'll walk through the process of how I address this in this video. Are you interested in learning more about infrared photography? Check out my book, Color Doesn't Exist, a practical guide to infrared photography. It's full of details for photographers at all skill levels. A link is in the description. All right, let's walk through the process of setting the white balance on an image that has multiple color temperatures. The first thing that I want to do is be able to shift those color temperatures so that I can set a good white balance and I'll need a profile to do that in Lightroom. So I'm going to select the infrared temp 100. This is from the infrared profile pack. There are profiles for a variety of cameras. You can get a link to that free download down in the description. So now that I've got that, I'll hit my W key and I'll set a white balance on the clouds. The sky is my primary white balance in this, and so that's what I'm going to start with, and that'll be the, the primary that I use with this selector. The next thing that I want to do is swap my colors. So in this case, I'm going to go to the profile browser, and I will use my infrared color swap profiles. These are profiles that you can create yourself, or they're profiles that you can purchase. If you want to swap uh, colors by making a trip to Photoshop as well. You can do that. You can swap colors in Photoshop. I have a set of actions that'll help you to do that for free as well. So let's pick a profile. I'm going to use this RBG to R. What this does is this is a channel mixer swap. Uh, so it swaps the red and the blue channels using the channel mixer, and then it takes the green channel and pushes it all the way to red. And I like the way that it creates this sort of uh, red teal look. So we'll select that profile and hit close. Okay, now that we've got our primary white balance selected and the color swap, let's get to work. So the first thing that I'll do is set a mask for the sky. So we'll do select sky. The algorithm does a pretty good job there of selecting the sky, so we'll take that. And I'll make a couple quick adjustments to the sky. So we will add a little dehaze to bring out some detail in those clouds, a little bit of contrast. There we go, that looks pretty good. Okay, so the sky is all set and we already have a good white balance in the sky. The next thing we'll do is start to work on the rest of the image. So if I right click on the mask, let's open up the mask panel here. If I right click on this mask and select duplicate and invert mask, this creates a new mask that is the opposite, the invert of the sky mask. And I find this to be really useful when editing lots of landscape images. If I start with the sky and just invert, it tends to be a little bit better than the subject, which can be a little bit tricky sometimes with, uh, with landscape images. So now I have this inverted mask and now I can start to make adjustments to the rest of the image. So the first thing that I want to do is look at how can I fix the color temperature. If I look at the image and pick the temp slider over here on the right, I can slide back and forth and I can see that going towards the yellow kind of makes the granite more blue. I'm kind of focused on this granite here on the right side of the image, this uh, granite that's in the sunlight. If I slide temperature to yellow, it makes it more blue-ish. And if I slide it to blue on the slider, we're opposite, we're in opposite land now, then because of the color swap, then it will become more red. And what I want to do is neutralize that. So I'm going to pick a tone that is probably somewhere around here. So around 25 there. And that neutralizes a lot of these colors. It's a very subtle adjustment. So that gets me somewhat neutral tones throughout most of the images except in the shadows. And if I want to make any other changes to this image uh, in, uh, to, to the non-sky parts of the image, I could do that with, you know, adding texture, adding clarity, adding contrast, those types of things. I could do those here as well too. Now the next thing that I want to do is tackle this third area which is in the shadows. That's going to take a little bit more work from a masking perspective. So I'll go to create mask. I'll select brush. Uh, and then that will give me a brush and I'll make this brush a little bit bigger. We'll start here on this rock. Got the overlay turned on. There we go. 
and I'll start to make some big sweeping moves around this brush, around this rock. And then I'm going to have to make my brush a little bit smaller and then start to work in some of the details. Now I'm not going to make a perfect mask for the sake of this demonstration, but typically what I would do is go in and make sure my edges were really crisp and I have a nice clean, nice clean edges around everything. Get into all the shadows here. These are the areas where I'm mostly concerned about the color temperature. One of the things I'll do with edges, because sometimes these edges can be really tricky and the auto mask can catch stuff, but I don't like the way that it catches in rocks. So frequently what I'll do is I'll go over a little bit, then switch to the erase brush, turn the auto mask on, and then that'll allow me to work through the edges from the outside and erase the portion that is in the sky. And I can get then a nice clean edge on my mask. There's a little bit of a lag. And there we go. So I've got a nice edge. I'll go down here, work on some of these other edges. So I can definitely work on this mask to get it where I like. Now that I have the mask set, now I could make a similar adjustment to this rock and decide how much of a color temperature change that I want to make here. And so I can go back to this slider. And as I start sliding, you'll see the same, I have the same kind of choices. I can either make the image very red or I can make it very blue. Now, sometimes this can be a little difficult to, to see. Some of these, the shades and the variations can be very subtle. So let me show you a trick that I use to make this a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna close out the mask and I'm gonna go down to, in the basic panel here, I'll go to the vibrance and saturation slider. And I'm just going to turn those up all the way. So we're going to really crank up the amount of color in this image. And now when the color's cranked up, now you can really start to see the blues and the reds kind of come out in the rock face. And especially down here in the lower left-hand corner, you can really start to see that. The other thing that happens a lot in, in my infrared images, depending on the subject, I'll frequently notice a bit of a color balance shift in the corners. It probably depends on the lens that I'm using. A color balance shift in the corners might be something that I want to address as well. Okay, so now that I've got this here, this oversaturated, I can go back to my mask and I'll pick my mask number two, which is the, the, the rock in the shadows, and I'll go back to my color temperature slider. And now when I make these adjustments, you can very dramatically see uh, what this looks like. And again, I'm not looking to to go extreme to one edge or the other of, of this color. I want to find a balance between the two. I want to balance between those reds and the blues. And having the colors cranked up all the way kind of really allows me to do that, figure out what the balance between those looks like. Okay, so that's kind of the balance I'm looking for. Now I can uh, close this out. The, I'm going to make a couple more changes while I have the, the saturation cranked up. It takes time to adjust when the saturation comes up and down, so I want to make some more changes here while I'm at it. So I'm going to create another brush, a new mask, and a brush. And I'm going to come in and do a little bit more work in this corner here. So we'll brush this corner and a little bit of this rock face, and a little bit more into here. And then I'll make some more color temperature adjustments. So play with this a little bit. There we go. I want to get a little bit of that blue out. So we'll nudge this back in the other direction. Try to find a, a compromise there. And then I might paint in this lower right-hand corner as well to try to you can see some of the edges, get a little bit of that cast out of the edges. You may find yourself looking at different parts of the image. Could be in the shade, in the shadows, could be the edges of your screen. Okay. So now that I've made those changes and completely burned my eyes out on this saturation, let's go back and eliminate all of this uh, vibrance and saturation. Now, sometimes uh, after I do this, I might have to walk away from the image for a bit because you know that saturation is a bit much and almost and now the image looks almost desaturated. Uh, so you might have to take a break here to find a good balance of what things look like. But you'll notice now uh, I have a nice color in the sky. So I've got a nice, a nice blue teal sky. My clouds are very white and I've got a much more uniform 
color ac across the granite. And what that does in this image is it allows this pink foliage to really pop out and stand out. And then as, as I continue to work this image, I could focus on the color of the foliage and then focus on contrast, clarity, texture, things like that for the other parts of the image. Let me take a quick pass at some of those things and we'll see if we can make this image look a little bit better like we did to the sky. So I'll go to this uh, mask one inverted, which is the ground, and we will add some texture, a little more texture, a little more clarity, a little more contrast, get that cranked up a little bit. And also I think I'm gonna add some saturation. That's the other thing is now that I've removed that color cast from much of the image, now if I add in saturation, it's predominantly going to impact the foliage and a little bit, you know, a little bit on the rock face, but it won't have quite the impact on the rock. Whereas beforehand, before I applied these masks, if I cranked the saturation, it would add a lot of color to the rocks. But now that I've made these adjustments to white balance, now the saturation predominantly focuses on the foliage. So that means I can turn it up even higher. I can get to high values of saturation that I might not normally do because of the cast that was on the rest of the image. So there we go. Now we have our image and we've balanced out all the colors, even though we had multiple zones of color temperature with the masking tool in Lightroom, we've been able to manage all of this. So how would you address these challenges in your infrared images? Uh, would you do something differently in Lightroom? What techniques would you use in Photoshop? Uh, are there similar techniques you would use in other programs? Please share your techniques in the comments below. Do you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey? If so, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.